I was adopted. I never knew my real mother. Rather, I knew her at one time, but I left her side when I was too little to be able to remember. I loved my adopted family, though. They were so kind to me. I ate well, I lived in a warm, comfortable house, and I got to stay up pretty late. Let me tell you about my family real fast. First, there's my mother. I never called her mom or anything like that, though. I just called her by her first name, Janice. She didn't mind it at all, though. I called her that for so long, I don't think she even noticed. Anyhow, she was a very kind woman. I think that she was the one who recommended my adoption in the first place. Sometimes I would lay my head against her in front of the television, and she would tickle my back with her nails. She's one of those Hollywood mothers. Second, there's Dad. His real name was Richard, but he never really did like me that much, so I began to refer to him as Dad in a desperate attempt to gain his affection. It didn't work. I think that no matter what I called him, he would never love me as much as his own child. That's understandable, so I didn't really press the matter. The most notable attribute of my dad was his unmoving sternness. He was not afraid to pop his children when they did something wrong. I found that out before I could use the restroom properly. He didn't hesitate to spank me. Well, I'm in line, and it's because of his methods. Lastly, is my sister. Little Emily was really young when I was adopted. So we were about the same age, but she was slightly older. I'd like to think of her as my little sister, though. We got along better than any siblings could possibly get along. We would always stay up late together and just talk. Well, she did a lot of the talking. I mostly just listened, because I loved her. It was a great setup that we had. We were short on bedrooms, so because I didn't want to sleep in the living room all by myself when I was littler, I had a pallet set up for me next to her bed on the floor. This is where I've slept since. But it was cool with me, because I enjoyed being with her, and I had always felt pretty protective of my little sis. Everything changed on a horrible Wednesday night. I was at home taking a nap when little Emily opened the front door. The sound of the door opening pulled me to a state of consciousness, and I walked from the room down the hall to the living room. That's when I first remembered it was Wednesday. I was never really good at keeping track of what day it was. Actually, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and say it. My sense of time was horrible, but nevertheless, I knew it was Wednesday because Emily had just come home from her church's youth group gathering. She walked in the front door and hugged me, and then was followed in by Dad and Janice. You have a good nap? Janice said, teasingly, as she ruffled up my hair. I just shook my head away and snorted in a manner that clearly expressed I was teasing back with her. Don't you snort at your mother like that, said my father gruffly with authority. He shut the door behind him and hung up his coat. I was clearly joking, I growled under my breath. He must not have heard me, because I didn't feel him smack me. Emily then proceeded to our room, and I followed. She started telling me about her day. You know, usual teenage girl stuff. But I listened, so that she could feel better. After her summary, she suggested watching TV, and I obliged, and jumped onto the couch as she was going for the remote. She rolled her eyes at my little brother-like immaturity, and scooted me over and then sat down. The TV turned on, and we watched it together until the sun went down. Emily was the kind of girl that, instead of watching cartoons or soap operas, would rather watch Discovery and Animal Planet and Natural Geographic. I liked those too, so I didn't mind. Actually, those were the only channels that could hold my attention. So it got late and Janice walked up behind the sofa. Emily, it's past your bedtime. Turn off the television and go to your room. You too, she pointed at me. Emily turned off the program we were watching grudgingly and stood up. She started down the hallway to her room as I followed. I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. We went to our room and Emily turned off the light. Just as she did, I caught a flash of movement out of the corner of my eye. It was out the window. But as soon as I redirected my line of sight to where the window was no longer in my peripheral vision, what it was that I thought I saw was gone. I still remained alert for my sister's sake. I laid there in the darkness with nothing but the thin ray of light from the street lamp outside to illuminate the room. It wasn't much. Time and time again, I could have sworn that I heard subtle sounds just out the window. A twig break, leaves crunching, clothes jostling, and all the while I could smell a faint stench of sweat and blood. I kept my eyes open most of the night. The sound outside subsided 
and the smell left my nose. I began to feel at ease. My eyelids closed. Not long after that, I heard a very loud crash on the other side of the house. I was up in an instant. There's someone in the house! I barked with extreme adrenaline coursing through me. Wake up! I shrilly pleaded with Emily. She did. And as soon as I saw her sit up, I ran to my parents' room. Dad was dead. His neck was splayed open and gaping as blood spilled out of it. Off the bed. Onto the floor. I saw the master bathroom's door was closed. And just before it, on the outside, was a man. A man... I don't feel comfortable calling it that. He was very large and rugged. He turned around and saw me. And that's when I saw him accurately for the first time. I won't forget it. His eyes were large and beady and trapped with lust. He was styling a beard that was badly unkempt with blood dripping off. His clothes were dirty and his face was cold. Just then I noticed the same horrid smell of sweat and blood from earlier, but this time it was overwhelming. He saw me. He saw me and grinned with a set of crooked yellow teeth. That smile threw me off. I thought that I was going to die, but then he turned back to the bathroom door, completely unperturbed by my presence. I was terrified and didn't know what to do. I just yelled and cried. I watched as he shouldered through the door. That was my mom's only protection. I watched as he raised a large razor that he was carrying, but obviously neglected to use it properly. I watched as he sliced her open and tore her to shreds. I then heard something, the last thing I wanted to hear. It was Emily's scream coming from behind me. The large monstrosity looked up from my butchered mother and stared at my little sister. I was distraught. He stood up and quickly started walking towards us. My sis turned and ran, and I was at a loss when he bypassed me and went straight after her. Why was she still in the house? Had she not assessed the situation and run? Apparently not. And now she was dead, and I was alone. I ran after them both. I expected the man to kill her as he had the rest of my family, but I was sadly mistaken. He grabbed her by the arm and jerked her as a way to make it clear that he was in control. He dragged her through the house. I was making all the noises I could now, hoping and praying that somebody would come to my aid. He mustn't take her, not her. As he passed me, I backed against the wall and whimpered with terror. Why? He didn't respond, except by putting his free hand on my head while Emily screamed in the other, saying, good boy. He gave another crooked grin and a very cold, unnatural laugh. I followed him to the door, where he dragged my helpless sister after him. He opened it and pulled her out and slammed it shut behind him. I'm now sitting in the house with my mutilated adopted parents, shivering and whimpering with dismay. He's out there with her, doing who knows what to her, and I can't do anything. I would if I could, but I can't. I would chase after them in a heartbeat, but I can't. I sit here, looking at the front door. I look down at my paws. If only I could open doors.